Hello everyone. Welcome to yet another session of our NPTEL on nonlinear and adaptive control. I'm Srikant Sukumar from Systems and Control IIT Bombay. We are into the ninth week of this course on adaptive control and I think all of you would agree that we have seen a sufficient number of analysis and design methods uh, for all of you to be able to actually pick up uh, real applied practical problems from your field and directly apply the methods that we have discussed. Uh, I would strongly encourage all of you to do so and report your results uh, to me or to the community or, you know, actually you know, develop and design uh, new techno technologies with these methods. Yeah, I mean, that's essentially the aim and scope of what we want to do here. Yeah. Um, so what uh, we were doing until last time was, of course, uh, this sort of, uh, you know, we were essentially looking at examples, at a particular example of the unmatched design. Right. And we did the design for this vector system using both the standard adaptive integrator backstepping which leads to over parametrization and uh, also the extended matching design method which doesn't lead to over parametrization but uh, yields uh, a control law which contains the derivative of the parameter update, parameter estimate right so uh, we then wanted to alleviate this issue and so we have started looking at the tuning function method for adaptive design and the first uh, basically piece that we saw last time was the definition for what is globally adaptively asymptotic stability and essentially this meant that for a system of this form 1.1 we are looking to uh, have the existence of uh, uh, you know um, and a feedback law which depends on the state and the parameter estimate and a parameter update law which again has a depends on a tuning function tau and an adaptation gain uh, a tuning function tau and an adaptation gain gamma um, and if you have these two which guarantees that x and theta hat remain globally bounded and also go to zero as t goes to infinity then you can say that your system is globally adaptively asymptotically stabilizable so this is where we were and we want to continue from here. So I'm going to mark my lecture uh, as lecture uh, 9.3, I believe, right here. Yeah, as lecture 9.3 right here, because I believe I was doing, uh, let's see, 9.2 here. Excellent, excellent. So we want to talk about uh, adaptive control Lyapunov functions. But before we can actually do that, we first need to know what is a control Lyapunov function. Those of you who have taken some nonlinear control course would know this notion. But for those of you who haven't, I want to talk a little bit about control Lyapunov functions. So I'm actually picking up from uh, some notes that uh, I have for my nonlinear systems course. Um, I will, of course, post these. But uh, I will cover a little bit of the material from here, not the proofs and so on and so forth. Um, but this should be enough for you to follow uh, what we are going to talk about, right? So the first thing is we look at what is called uh, control affine systems. What is a control affine system? It is essentially a nonlinear dynamical system where the dynamics are linear in the control. Yeah. So control affine means linear in the control, and usually it is written as x dot is f0 plus summation ui fi yeah, ui times fi where uh, i ranges from some 1 to m so there are m controllers right you can see that there are m control laws and you know, each of these f uh, because x is in rn uh, therefore each of these f0s and fi's also map to rn 
right? And they are sufficiently smooth. They are C infinity functions. This F0, which doesn't uh, get connected with the control, is called uh, a drift vector field. And the Fi's, which are connected to the control, uh, are called control vector fields, right? Notice that there is no unknown parameter and all that such here because this is just standard nonlinear control. We are not talking adaptive control and unknown parameters yet. Yeah. So now for systems of this form 2.3, we, uh, we of course first assume that uh, there exists a U bar, uh, you know, such that, uh, you know, zero is an equilibrium, right? So we of course want to talk about the zero equilibrium stability and therefore, uh, we want the existence of a u bar such that zero is in fact an equilibrium right uh, then we define a control lyapunov function for this system as a function v which again takes the states and maps to real numbers uh, again and is assumed to be smooth c infinity means smooth function such that it is zero at zero and it is positive definite for all x in some local domain around the origin br is basically a ball of radius r around the origin yeah so you want so this is standard positive definiteness as you can see the first line is just asking for positive definiteness of this function v this is standard requirement for also a candidate lyapunov function i hope all of you remember right uh, even for a candidate lyapunov function you need sufficient smoothness and uh, positive definiteness so this is standard but the second piece is something slightly different. It says that if the partial of V with respect to X times Fi X is zero for some X, right? And all I. Right? So basically what am I saying? I'm saying that uh, if I take the derivative of V right, with respect to this system, right? What do I have? Um, I will have something like del v del x f0 plus summation fi ui what you see here on the left right and now if i multiply only the control terms i get del v del x fi and if all these control terms are zero yeah for a particular value of the state then i want for sure that del v del x f0 be negative strictly negative definite okay so whenever x is such that the control terms become zero i want the drift term to be strictly negative this is what it means to be a control lyapunov function and we also say i mean although i did not really talk about the earlier definition we also say that this is equivalent to definition 2.5 which is the original definition of a control lyapunov function right which is in this form but let's not worry about this form what we want what is the equivalent version is that uh, there exists u such that inf over u well actually i should not say that we want infimum over u del v del x f0 plus summation ui fi should be less than zero whenever x is non-zero right so this is essentially what you need from a control lyapunov function by the way i i'm not proving it here i mean the proof is again in these notes and i will post these if you're interested you can look at the proof but that's not required for our uh, you know scope of our discussion here uh, so these two are equivalent right this point and this are equivalent right uh, either you can say that if I take an infimum over the control, uh, and this is basically v dot, right? Because it is del v del x times x dot, right? And this has to be strictly negative for all non-zero x, or I can say it equivalently as if the control terms do not contribute anything, they are exactly zero for a particular value of x. Then, at that particular value of x, this has to be negative. Okay, so this is what it means to be a control Lyapunov function. What is the difference here? 
uh, when we were talking about standard Lyapuna functions, there was no mention of the control. Control never appeared in B dot. Yeah, we always talked about Lyapunov analysis for systems of the form x dot is fpx. Right? There was no control. Here there is a control. So therefore we have to account for what the control does to the system. Therefore, there is the uh, concept of having a uh, infimum. Right? So there is the concept of having an infimum. Right? And similarly, there is, in this case also, here we don't have an infimum in this particular version, right? but we uh, sort of have a partial with respect to V uh, of X, uh, del V del X multiplied by the Fi, right? And, uh, you know, which, which if it's equal to zero, then we want del V del X times the F0 to be strictly negative, okay? So we have to account for the contribution of the control when talking about the definiteness right essentially these are the second condition is sort of a definiteness condition on v dot right? which is the same as what you had for Lyapunov functions also but here we have to account for the contribution of the control yeah and that's what makes it a control Lyapunov function now why do we care about control Lyapunov function uh, there is very nice results by Sontag uh, and Sussman uh, which and, and of course also also arch time uh, which say that it is possible to construct uh, you know smooth almost smooth feedback uh, if there exists a control Lyapunov function right so existence of a control Lyapunov function is equivalent to being able to construct a feedback and this is where a very strong very powerful result right but before we can say that we have to also talk about what is a small control property right so what is a small control property? It says that, uh, you know, essentially it's in this epsilon delta form. It says that for all epsilon positive, there exists a delta such that uh, for all non-zero x and x smaller than delta, uh, there exists a control which is, you know, close to the equilibrium control in terms of epsilon. And you have the v dot to be strictly negative right right so this is uh you know sort of the interesting interesting thing right i mean what is the interesting thing uh, you know that at the equilibrium the control is u bar all right you know that at the equilibrium the control is in fact u bar right uh, what we are saying is that uh close to the equilibrium that is close to the equilibrium value of the control right uh there exists such a control u which is close to the equilibrium value which makes my v dot negative definite okay so there exists such a control so this is what it means to have small control power. it means uh, with a small control if i'm starting close to my equilibrium with a small control i can sort of make my v dot negative and if my v dot is negative it means that I'm going close to the equilibrium, right? I mean, that is the philosophical idea, right, of the Lyapunov analysis that V dot negative definite means asymptotically converging, right, and, is, and also asymptotically stable. Therefore, we are saying that with a small control, which is, uh, uh, we, we are saying that which is a control which is close to the equilibrium value of the control, I can push my states starting from near the equilibrium to the equilibrium value, so near the origin in this case to the origin. Okay, so uh, just to give an example, it is not uh, always possible to have small control, yeah, for stabilization. If you look at a system of like this, x dot is x plus x squared u, right? Uh, you know what? If you think about this kind of a system, right? Um, if you uh, you know if you want to stabilize the origin, right? If you want to stabilize the origin, what would you have to do? You would sort of, uh, you know, have to get a minus x sort of to cancel this guy out, right? If you would sort of want to have a minus x, right? And so what it means is that uh, if if uh, if say x is if x is small, then this is really tiny, really tiny. So you will have to be very large and negative, right? You will have to be very large. Okay? Yeah. So let's look at different situations. U has to be large for small x. That's important. If U is positive, 
so u is positive for x is negative right if x is negative right this is anyway positive doesn't matter if x is negative u has to be positive right because it has to counter this guy similarly if x is positive u has to be negative right so the sign of the uh, u is opposite to that of x right so near the origin that is the equilibrium yeah u has to be opposite sign so x u has to be positive for negative x u has to be negative for positive x but as you go closer and closer to the origin u has to be larger and larger so very close to the origin u is minus infinity on one side almost and positive infinity on the other side so it is not at all a small control problem in fact this creates a discontinuous control right even though the states are very close to the origin starting very close to the origin the control that is needed to actually push them towards the origin is very large in the uh, very large in almost plus minus infinity all right so this is uh, sort of the problem that you want to avoid and therefore we declare this as a property called the small control property so i really would strongly suggest that you think carefully about this problem yeah i may have spoken too quickly but i would urge you to think about this very carefully this sort of an example very carefully and why the control becomes discontinuous if you don't have the small control property yeah so the proposition which is leads to what is called the archstein sontag universal formula which we'll look at soon essentially says that if there exists a control lyapunov function then uh, a system satisfies the small and control uh, small control property if and only if it admits a almost c infinity stabilizer and almost c infinity stabilizer means there exists a control u which is smooth everywhere except at the origin where it's only continuous right which is still very nice right so uh, the proof of this kind of a proposition which is called the archstein sontag theorem very very famous result very famous result uh, was done using an actual control construction u for this system right for this system for this uh, you know system 2.3 control affine system uh, and that construction is what we show so we declare as and this construction relies of course on the control layout on a function v and we de define a as del v del x f0 and b as the vector containing the del v del x f i's right and the control is actually defined in this way yeah whenever b is non zero right b non zero means at least one of them is non zero right and b zero means every entry of b is zero and this is essentially the control lyapunov condition right if b is zero means all of these are zero for all i these are zero for all i and that is what it means for b to be zero right and b non zero means at least one of them is non zero so if one, at least one of them is non zero then you have this nice construction which with a division by b norm of vx right and uh, this is you know essentially what you have and this is non zero so because b is non zero so norm is non zero so this is well defined but when b is zero this norm is not well defined so control is defined as zero and this uh, archstein sontag actually show that this is a smooth control law they show that this is a smooth control law we there's also a proof here which i'm not going to go through uh, but you can actually compute v dot uh, here using our you know uh, standard uh, way of computing v dot which is del v del x so v dot is just this guy for this control affine system and if i plug in for the control u1 to um because u is basically the vector of u1 to um if you plug in this guy uh, this is ax plus bx transpose u and you you essentially get this expression yeah and you know very well that ax is negative by existence of clf and this quantity is also negative so in both cases whether b is zero or bx is non zero in either case you have a negative quantity here uh, therefore v dot is negative definite therefore you have asymptotic stability by standard lyapunov theorems right so what happened is that the existence of a control lyapunov function actually gives you a control design yeah in fact if you remember uh, 
our control designs are also based on first designing a Lyapunov function. Yeah, so indirectly we are in fact designing control Lyapunov functions. Yeah, although we don't call them control Lyapunov functions and we don't use the Arstein Sontag formula, we are in fact using the V to design a controller. Therefore, we are designing control Lyapunov functions. So I hope you understand this. Yeah, that. I know that this formula is a complicated one and we will see this. Suppose I look at this kind of an example here. Okay, something very simple system x dot is minus x cube plus u. So we can do design in multiple different ways. First, I can directly prescribe a controller. I cancel this term and introduce a minus x. So x dot is minus x. What happens? Because of the structure of the control, u is large when x is large. Yeah, because if x is even if x is 10, then you know this is this takes value 990. Yeah. Now the second kind of design is when I use a v, which is possibly a control Lyapunov function, right? Yeah. So so notice what what does the theorem say? Before I proceed to this example, you know, more carefully, what does this theorem say? The theorem says that the control Lyapunov function with a control Lyapunov function, the small control property is equivalent to existence of a stabilizer okay so there are two ways to talk about a control Lyapunov function one is i have a control Lyapunov function and from that i can use an arstein sontag formula to get a controller the second is i have a function v and using that function v i come up with a stabilizing controller u and if i can do that then it means that the v i chose was a control Lyapunov function okay so this is the important message to remember right if with a v i can design stabilizing control u then v is a CLF. This is by virtue of the if and only if condition. Okay, and this is what we have been doing, right? We have been picking up a V, and then with that, we've been coming up with a U, right? Which was stabilizing. Therefore, all the V that we chose until now were control Lyapunov functions. Okay, without explicitly saying so. The other side is, of course, I know that the V is a control Lyapunov function, and I use an Arstein Sontag like form. Okay, so let's look at this example in more detail and try to connect it to what we have been doing. Right? The first is I just chose blindly a controller because I know this is giving me a target system x dot is minus x. Excellent. Let's do the second thing. Choose v is x squared by 2. Compute a v dot which is x x dot which is x minus x cube plus u. I know that this is minus x4. So it's a good term. I don't need to do anything about it. I choose u as minus x. Yeah, I choose u as minus x and I'm done, right? I, I get a negative definite v dot. Great. So I know that this v is a CLF, right? Because I can choose a stabilizing control u. Okay, great. So this, what is the value of this control? u equal to minus x? It's minus 10. It's minus 10, all right? So no problem. Very good. Okay. Let's look at, uh, again, the v being x squared by 2. I know that it is already a CLF. Yeah, because of this previous case, right? Because I know it's positive definite and it's, it's, you know, there exists a stabilizing controller. If I choose a V and I can compute a stabilizing controller using that V, then it is a control Lyapunov function because of the if and only if relationship, right? So therefore, V is a CLF. Now, what do I do? I apply the Arstein Sontag formula and I get this complicated expression for control, right? It's, it's something like this, right? Something like this. Now, what is the cool thing about this controller? The cool thing is that uh, when x is large, then notice that this is almost nothing, right? So this is almost zero, almost zero. When for large values of state, that is again, when x is 10, this control came out to be 990, this came out to be minus 10, and this quay will come out to be almost zero. And when x is small, this is of the order of minus x because this is almost zero, this is almost zero. So I'm, I have x of the order of minus x. 
which is the same as the second control. So somehow the Artstein Sontag formula, though complicated looking, I mean the controller is rather complicated looking as compared to what we you know intuitively chose, but it has better properties, right? It gave me a, a you know small value of control when the state is really large. And when the states are really small, the starting states are really small, then it is almost acting like a minus X, right? So this is excellent, right? It's a very good controller. Yeah, typically uh, when you do a control design, your, your control value is very large for large states. Yeah, so, but this is actually very small for large states. The control value is very small for large values of states. And when the state becomes very close to the equilibrium here, uh, then the control is, uh, you know, of the order of minus x, which is also relatively small, yeah, quite okay. Yeah. So, uh, so this is the idea of a control Lyapunov function. Now, I know this is a very, very, uh, unfortunately, a very, very uh, minimal uh, lecture on control Lyapunov functions. As you can see, uh, you know, this is a rather, uh, you know, relatively longer lecture. I start here, started here. Um, I only talked to you about this guy that is definition 2.7. Then we looked at, you know, the small control property and then Nachstein Sontag. I didn't talk to you about the smoothness, how it's smooth, how to prove it's smooth. Um, but this is sufficient for our understanding, right? What do we need to remember? We need to remember that there is two aspects to a control Lyapunov function. One is that it is the it is a function such that if I take infimum over all possible control uh, of v dot, then it has to be negative definite. This is what is a control Lyapunov function. So if I take an infimum uh, over all possible uh, control of v dot, then it has to be negative definite. This is what I need for function to be a CLF. Then there is also the small control property, which is a critical property for continuity of the control near the equilibrium or the origin in this case. And uh, being able to choose a V and compute a control, a stabilizing control from here with this V means that this V was a control Lyapunov function, right? So that's the back, I mean, there's the converse implication. The forward implication is if V is a control Lyapunov function and you know that, then you can use the Artstein Sontag formula, uh, which is this formula to devise a smooth stabilizing control. The converse is, of course, what we've been doing until now. Before, in, uh, although we didn't call it a uh, you know control Lyapunov function, we have been doing this. We have been taking a V and define designing stabilizing controllers out of that, and uh, that is essentially uh, implying that the V we chose to begin with was a control Lyapunov function. Yeah. So instead of choosing that particular stabilizing controller we chose, for example, with the same x squared by 2, I I might have chosen intuitively this u equal to minus x as my stabilizing controller, but I need not have. Yeah. Once I knew using this u, once I can com compute a u and I know that v is a CLF, I can actually go back and use the Sontag, Artstein Sontag universal controller. Yeah. That's also another choice. So it's like, you know, for the same uh, V, I can get multiple choices of, uh, you know, control designs. Yeah. With, with different properties, of course. I mean, in this case, we saw that uh, U equal to minus X is larger in magnitude. Uh, that is, you know, depending on the state. But uh, whatever I got from the Einstein Sontag formula is actually very small in magnitude for large states. Yeah. So that's rather nice. All right. Excellent. Um, so what did we uh, look at today? Uh, we uh, sort of started talking about control Lyapunov functions for nonlinear systems that are not uh, that are not uncertain, that do not have any uncertainties. Uh, we tried to compare it with what is a Lyapunov function itself, and uh, essentially it uh, includes the role of the control in the Lyapunov function and its derivative. Right, the idea of positive definiteness and negative definiteness positive definiteness of V and negative definiteness of V dot still appear. Yeah, it's just that the role of the control gets uh, explicitly mentioned here in the case of a control Lyapunov function. And the cool thing about control Lyapunov functions and why they are powerful is that using the Artstein-Sontag universal formula, you can actually design a control corresponding 
to a control Lyapunov function. So control Lyapunov function comes with a controller. Yeah, and this is a smooth controller, almost smooth controller. That is, it's smooth everywhere except at the origin where it is at least continuous. So uh, you have a rather nice result. I mean, it's a little bit involved, the theory of control Lyapunov functions. And of course, if you read the Arstein Sontag uh, papers, they're also a little bit more involved and complicated. Um, but the crux is this, right? And as you mentioned, we have already been using this idea of CLF. We have been using CLFs to design controllers. We've just not been calling them CLFs. All right, excellent. So in the upcoming session, we'll be able to start discussing adaptive control Lyapunov functions for uncertain nonlinear systems. All right. So I hope you will join me there. Thanks.